are you ready to talk about your book? Uh, oh yeah. Hold it up. Oh, show it to everybody. Uh, it's a graphic novel, and it's actually dystopian. Yes. Yes. Legitimately and so. In a world now where dystopian in a literature world <laughs> where dystopian literature isn't very dystopian. Isn't very at all. dystopian. Uh, uh, we have yeah. an actually dystopian story. Yes, it is. Uh, do you want to tell us about first of all, like how you came to writing a comic, uh -huh. uh, a graphic novel? I drew and it what too. And, and drew it, and yeah. what inspired you to do so? Um, well, uh, I've always drawn comics since I was a kid, and sitting around my house during lockdown and terrified of the future, it's the only thing I did could do to like process what was going on. So this was written during. COVID. I did the whole thing. Basically, I wrote the outline. I did a road trip from Philly to Texas with my dad and seeing the difference between what was going on in Philly throughout the rest of the country was pretty uh, uh, stark. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And and so I wrote the outline. I had drawn a few pages. I'm sorry. We yep. got one oh, from what is it? What's it say? B1 with the Burt. One of us, one of us, one of us. Well, and I am one with the Burt. <laughs> yes. The I, Burt I, wrote the first review of House on Fire. Yes. And, he did. And it was wonderful. And Thank you. I didn't know a cult leader was going to write about my book, <laughs> and I'm very happy that he did. It's fantastic. Honored. Seriously, guys, where, pick it up. Thank Bertopia, you. Bertopia, where <laughs> obedience is your only refuge. Exactly, yeah. Where yeah. fear is rational. That's four. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, PTZ camera. Uh, tell us about, like, if you were to give, like, a short review for it, what would you, how would you? Oh, review? man, a short review. Um... <laughs> So this was something in the back of my mind when I was reading it. When you when when there's stuff that comes out that's kind of it talks about real life problems, real things that happen. You remember Wonder Woman two when it was like no. he's he's supposed to be Trump, and you watch the movie, you're like, yeah. no, this is what your delusional idea of Trump is, guys. Right. When I read this, I kept thinking to myself like, it's fiction, it's dystopian. But like, not really, almost, yeah. you know? The whole time I'm reading, I'm like, yeah, I, I especially being in California, I, I saw these kinds of things happening, yeah. you know? Um, so that's the thing that I, I, I think modern fiction doesn't really capture is the human experience. Yeah. No, it, it, and you know, the reason why I had to make it uh, was that I, and I, I didn't think, wasn't thinking about it while I was drawing it and writing mm -hmm. it, but afterwards I realized like, oh, I haven't seen anything about what, the entire world went through this horrifying traumatic experience where our governments locked us all down and you know destroyed businesses families uh you know you lost loved ones you weren't allowed to have a funeral it was mm -hmm. awful and there's been no art made about this yeah. thing and so we have like the bubble right yeah <laughs> which there's it, it nothing. just treats it with none of the seriousness of like the yeah. pain that anyone I, and that, to be felt. fair i do think it's actually a, a very like tough road to go down a lot of tv shows incorporated covid and i hated it I well, hated because it's it. yeah it, because they incorporated incorporated it as if it was normal yes yeah. it like that's the problem is no this is yeah. the, the, the all that new normal bullshit yeah, yeah. uh it, it, this isn't good and it's yeah. not and 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 so it to me it, it, you you have to have some sort of cultural record of what went on yes and what's what could happen if they take the power back again i i there's a scene where um the the sort of border guard pulls yes. up the temperature reader mm -hmm. and and I, I mean you it must have happened to you in california oh my God. And, yes. and, and it happened like went to like a concert and they were doing it and yes. it's like really this is yeah horrifying mm -hmm. so all of these experiences and things i was trying to filter into the the book, but I also didn't want to make something where where you were reading it and you were feeling like being like I was trying to tell you something. I think I, mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it broad enough where you could put your own experiences into it, put your own life into it. Um, my youngest sister lives down in like Del Rio in Texas, mm -hmm. and she saw a lot of the things that are going on around the border where people would will actually go from Texas into Mexico for medical treatment. Yeah, yeah, because it's cheaper. So. So that's funny. She read that into it. She didn't even think about it necessarily from the COVID angle. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to, I did purposefully, it's not, it's very much about my reaction to what happened, but um, it's not some sort of explicit COVID mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, you don't mention COVID at all. It's no. Well, it's a different disease that is obviously, I mean, I'm not saying this to yeah. minimize the seriousness of, you know, anyone who got COVID and did uh, die from it or, you know, had a serious health complication from it, but it, you're portraying a disease that affects young, healthy people in a way more serious way than COVID ever did. And 
you're showing a society with much more like hard, tyrannical, totalitarian measures being taken. Right. But um, then you also did a nod to like the soft totalitarian pr propaganda because there's like a poster in the background as he drives by of a yeah. smiling person wearing the mask. <laughs> yeah. It's like, stay safe. Yeah, well, I again, in you driving around uh, 95 in your Philly, it's like there, I'm, there still are a few of these billboards of like masks, vax, be Dude, safe but, or whatever. Yeah. Going to Los Angeles, same thing. Oh, yeah. You know what yeah. it was here that was? It was when I first saw like a road sign that said vaccine clinic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that one, dystopian yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, one that's like, it, it had to be manufactured. Yeah, somebody <laughs> had to make that in like in was, recent time yeah. and then be like, hey, go put up the vaccine clinic sign over there on 280. Or I've seen other ones like get a vaccine to protect your baby. Or all yeah. the stupid, the, the stickers that they all made that were like stay six feet apart and yeah. they put them on the floor everywhere. And oh that, in Which that, direction? infrastructure right. is still present today yes. and who is going to peel those stickers off the floor who's going to be that guy i mean someone like, should but i always think about it but like th this is these are the things where in and um you're young enough that you probably didn't have to don't remember but pre 9 11 like there was a huge difference yeah mm -hmm. before not b yeah. before and after yeah a lot of them will never understand like airport travel before 9 11 <laughs> right you know? and yeah. and and we oh, have to remember what we're, what's from, getting taken from us. It's like COVID, right? Or yeah. whatever viruses. That's not even the story. The yeah, story yeah. is the desperation. Like it literally took me back to that March, April, right when California shut down. My, wa my wife lost uh, two. I think she was employed by three people. So three of her jobs. I was the only one supporting everything. And yeah. I'm just like, I, I don't know how we're going to stay afloat. So like, you know, the story about the husband and the wife, I'm just like, that was like, okay, I get it. That's yeah. exactly how it felt. It, Thank you. It, yeah. uh, it incorporates something that I think a lot of dystopian literature and television and movies have lost, which is the feeling like an unrelenting feeling. It never lets up. There is never a lull in all the things that can and will go wrong yeah. in this type of situation when it's a world of people that have lost all semblance of rules and everyone's out for themselves. Uh, also, the other thing I wanted to ask was like, what mm -hmm. inspired the color palette and the art style? Uh, well, the art style, that's just, that's how I draw. That's just how you draw. So, uh, it has a very change it. <laughs> it has a very distinct color palette. It has a very yeah. distinct look for inking. So so I inked it all with a brush. I did it all very quickly. Um I, I inked every page in about an hour and a half to two hours, which is and, and I went basically straight from uh layouts to inks. And my hope was to capture some of that desperation and emotion in in the actual art itself. Exactly. Um which I th I think is you know the line quality it, mm -hmm. something that you can that comics i think does better than other things where you have a bunch of ways that you can communicate something and just the way that you draw something says says something about the subject absolutely and the color palette is hopefully was meant to accentuate the tone as well mm -hmm. um i like having a tone i didn't want to go full color one uh printing it's an ex expensive but um two i think that a full color would make it feel too too hollywood i guess that's i was gonna yeah. say it would make it feel overly produced and it yeah. would actually lessen the seriousness of the tone yeah, it, yeah. It, and and i don't it shouldn't it, you know i'm not trying to be uh, the, this book would never get published by like a marvel or a dc it doesn't even fit in with image and so i'm lucky that i have a publisher who you know took a chance on it mm -hmm. Um, because it, I think that I was trying to make something for adults and I don't mean that in, you know, you have to be 40 to read it. I mean it in, it should make you think and feel something. Whereas I think a lot of comics, a lot of genre stuff in general is just product for the sake of product to, you know, uh, take your eyeballs. All the Star Wars shows, they, they don't exist for any meaning or purpose. They don't walk out of them saying, oh, I learned something or I felt something. Uh, and I think that that's a real problem with our culture. They've actually gotten very good at manufacturing the feeling that you might actually be experiencing yes. something emotional, usually through music. Yep. They, they're they very good at using score. That was Wakanda to, Forever all the way. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's a Star Wars does that too, and any of those mm -hmm. scores, you know, you hear this soaring 
score and you're like you almost can't help but your, your oh, the heart last does. of us is a big offender in that too yeah I yeah didn't, i like, didn't watch it i was i was watching um like old justice league cartoons the other night the uh -huh. justice league cartoon has fantastic music and this is on a kid's show well, so same with the old Batman, the animated series. Exactly. Was, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and the like, the Batman Beyond uh, intro song, which oh, just yeah. goes way too hard. Oh, it, <laughs> too hard? It, it's amazing. Oh, okay. Amazing. Oh, oh, yeah, I, amazing. I thought you meant it like in a bad way. No, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. I also want to say, do you think that the concept of dystopian in literature and cinema mm -hmm. and television has kind of become oversaturated? I... <sighs> or is this kind of, it goes in the same discussion as people who say like, there is no superhero fatigue. There, people, they're just not making good movies. Do you think that there will that there isn't necessarily a fatigue on dystopian properties? It's just not being done very well right now. I don't. I don't think that I would say that. Yeah, I think fatigue's a tough word because it just means that it, you're you're assuming what a crowd is sort of tired of. I would agree that it's just things aren't good. Like the superhero movies, I just. I, I'm also. I don't care about the genre anymore. I'm, yeah. When I was. A kid it's different and there are definitely plenty of co like superhero comics that mean something to me but they're all ones either a well they're all ones by artists that i really like so there is the the art factor of it you know i'm a yeah. huge frank miller fan and his work has highly influenced me if you read the book i think that that's obvious uh but um like there's nothing superhero that's come out in the past 20 years i feel like that i've really latched onto just because it doesn't after a point, like, I'm married, I have a kid, like, I, it doesn't mean anything. None of these characters are doing anything remotely. It's like, okay, big Weezer, I liked, you still really like Weezer, okay? Saw Weezer at MSG years ago. Weezer's music has not grown up. Weezer is all, like, they're 50, and they're still writing songs about being in high school and going to meet their teenage girlfriend's dad. <laughs> and it's like, you guys are so far removed from that life, and your audience is so far removed. Well, who is this for? Um... <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this band, The Menzingers, which is a punk band outside of from Philly, and they're making songs that actually have aged up with them. And I think that's important is to make stuff and make art with where you're at in life. And superheroes just isn't that. And I don't think that there's a ton. Well, I meant even. I, I was saying in dysto like no, dystopia, dystopia. like dystopia. Sorry, do you I think, went elsewhere. Do you think <laughs> dystopian literature and dystopian cinema? Because like we watched, we reviewed The Last of Us. Yeah. And uh, for as much praise as the video game gets, the show just felt like it was fine. Like to me, yeah. it was just like I watched it. It was fine. Mary didn't like it. I thought meh whatever like it's like i would never watch it again whereas uh -huh. the concept of dystopian literature and media used to be something that drew a lot more people in i i yeah i i don't know that dystopia necessarily has a shelf life yeah. i just think that things hit and either they reflect I, the thing that i was going for with house on fire was to just play out what we all went through a couple more cycles around yeah. and i think that there is there is a little bit of eye rolling that happens with something like the last of us or like the walking dead tv show where it's like okay yes we were the bad guys all along i yeah. get it and where you play it out where it goes on for too long and it doesn't end and um but i don't think that means dystopian as a genre is done i think it's always people are going to make sci-fi people are going to make dystopian i think that what maybe what we're tired of is remakes and things being the same idea over and over again yeah. I, I mean i don't know how the, the fact that the last of us has, was made as a game then remade again as a game hasn't it been re remade a third time now so it was made and then it had a remaster come out so it's, okay. it's, it's a light remake yeah, yeah uh then they had the sequel come out and uh -huh. then they had the remake come out and now uh -huh. they got the tv, TV. show and then so. the tv show for the second second the remake game. Yeah. after the sequel what is that the remake after this um they remade the game so the first game then they had a remaster which isn't really yes. it's not a remake uh, then they had the sequel, yeah. right? So we'll forget about that one. Then they made the remake <laughs> yeah. of the first game. They remade the first game. They remade the first game after they remastered it a couple years after. Yeah. So and then they had the TV show. So okay. you've seen the the story like three, four times now. Uh, do you think that there is a lesson, a specific lesson to be learned, or would you, it was the point of House on Fire to be more open ended? Uh, for me, it's it's I, I. There's probably a lesson in there, but. I purposely left it kind of open for people because that's six. Whew.
I think, like, to me, we've had a, an epidemic lately of topics where artists, whether we're talking about the guys who made the boys, who want to tell viewers yeah. how they're supposed to interpret their art. I love the Garth Ennis com the, the comic of the boys was oh. so funny and ridiculous and insane. We uh, got one from got last one. name, first name, just ordered a copy, looking Hell forward yeah. to reading it. There got we go. So Thank you so much. Right modern on. day media, it's just the same rehashed poo poo garbo. Also poo -poo praise garbo. Bert. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Thank you, last name, first name. <laughs> yes. That is awesome. I appreciate so, it. I see a lot of creators mm -hmm. uh, especially in hollywood the ones who are built into the machine who don't have to worry about whether people like them or not they seem to want to tell people how to interpret their art yeah i hate that uh the the point of art in it in, in, is that you once you make the thing this is no longer house on fire is no longer my thing it is a thing that the audience should interact with and hopefully enjoy get something out of but that's up to you that's you the individual and i don't really want to tell people what they should take out of it i don't want to tell people what they should think i have a very small afterword in it um just because i would like people to know that a human being made it and all that and i have i'm a person who exists but um yeah i just i i, I hate that it, it, on all these press tours that people do for shows for movies for books they all there's just this constant like oh well this was about trump or this was about whatever <laughs> and it's like this you're removing any ability for someone to actually engage with your work yeah. because you just told everyone what to think. And that's frustrating for an audience member. That's just not how art should work. It, it, you go into a museum and there's always a little placard that tells you what the thing was about. And I always think it's stupid to read that before just taking it in because then you now you just now you have what the museum person would like you to think about the thing that you're looking at. And I just don't think that's the right way to, to look to appreciate art. Um, it's noted at the end yep. of the book that you became a father oh, yeah. while uh, in the middle of like developing this. So mm -hmm. I guess firstly, uh, can you like speak to how that affected the, the story or of how you would interpret it now versus like maybe when you first conceived it? And then... Uh, also, have you read *The Road* um, by Cormac yes. McCarthy? And how do you think? Uh, it, what did you think of that? Did you? Like I like *The Road*. I like Cormac McCarthy. Um, great book. I'm not a great reader of like word books. It just comes to mind as but something. Cormac is one I read. A dystopian yeah. uh, story that is like mm -hmm. it features fatherhood in a non-negative light. Yeah. So the next, I mean, whatever I make next will definitely more explicitly deal with fatherhood. Uh, I had to finish this before uh, our, yeah. our daughter was born because uh, having a newborn is not conducive to getting anything done. Right. So it didn't really affect the story because it had happened, but it, you know, I was already, I was just writing it at the end. So I, I do all the drawing first. I lay it out without words. So like I draw the entire book and then the last thing I do is put any of the words in because for me, hmm. Uh, you, for me, comics are meant to be understood with, like, your visual storytelling should ex should get you through the story. You should be able to read a comic without having to read a single word necessarily. And so the words are to add a little color and and life to it. But um, that was the last thing I did. But yeah, ha be, ha being becoming a father has definitely changed some of my concerns. But I also didn't want to put anything negative about having a when i was so there's a scene where 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 he gets uh well i won't do spoil there's a scene in there and then that scene happened to me kind of in real life mm -hmm. and i was worried if i put anything regarding my child in the book like i didn't want to put some sort of negative juju out there in the atmosphere yeah. mm -hmm. which okay. is weird superstitious but uh yeah having a baby does change your uh, view of the world mm -hmm. And it terrifies me more of technology. So the next book is going to definitely be. That it changes was the that. stakes of everything. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That was going to be my next question is, uh, will there be a like a, a new story anytime soon? Uh, uh, this is a self-contained story. So, yes. and, and as we keep talking about expanded universes and when stuff. When is like House stupid, on Fire 2 coming There will out. never be a sequel. No, uh, when is the spinoff coming House out? House on Fire 2 There will not be a spinoff. <laughs> and, and I promise that my next cover won't have a the protagonist about upside house down on, on water it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um yeah i i don't know i have an idea i know what the sort of overarch the arc of the next book i want to do is 
uh, I just need to find time to draw it. And I want to make it longer, um, which is a challenge because it just takes more time. And yeah, it's definitely going to focus on technology, our relationship with technology. And my big concern is how do I keep my child like safe from social media, the yeah. internet, tech? You can't escape it. But how do you create like some sort of healthy relationship with it? Because you see so many horror stories about what happens to people because of social media, because of the internet, especially young girls. Um, like back with our with the the swimmer that we were talking about, mm -hmm. it, she's, I mean, she's being persecuted yeah. constantly. I imagine, and probably constantly being bullied online. And, and bullying is probably too light of a word, but assaulted. So the. the it used to be, you know, back when I was a kid, you, when you left school, you left school, it was done. And now it's not done. You yeah. never escape it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. That's horrifying. We didn't have social media when we were no. that young. There are no photos of my college experience. It was just very good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And before so. we move on and start the rest of the show, why don't you tell everyone where they can find the book again one more time? Okay. So the book is House on Fire. You can buy it anywhere books are sold. Uh, Amazon. You can get it at Barnes Noble. You can get it from Target online. You can buy it direct from my publisher. But um, yeah. All right. MattJBat.com is my website. It's got links and everything like that. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.